Hi everyone, welcome to Bulga. This is my little part of the world. It's the southwest gateway to the Hunter Valley from Carlo River in Windsor near Sydney. These are some of the views of the village of Bulga on a good day after welcoming rain in the valley. Our famous bridge and the beautiful little Wallamai Brook. Bulga is nestled at the foothills and plains near the majestic Wallamai National Park, one of the largest in New South Wales and this is where I have raised my family. This is the view from my home. My daughter owns a Wallamai Hills riding school. Yes, that is fog and rain, praise the Lord, and not the dust that commonly envelops our home. This is a view of some of the land to be affected by this Wombo United Open Cut proposal. This is most of the United section, with the Wombo section continuing approximately two kilometres over the rise towards Jerry's Plains. Walkworth used to be a pretty place with a thriving community before the open cuts took over. This extension is massive and should not be approved. This is what the United Proposal Park might look like in 23 years. The Wombo extension area will make it substantially larger. The proposal which is in the red lines is only 13 kilometres west northwest of Singalon and prevailing winds will bring even more dust regularly to Singland's residence. This next map shows the mines between Singland and Musselbrook. The cumulative effect is obvious and there are more large proposals waiting on approval. Completely ridiculous. The next clip shows the whole of the Hunter Valley all the way to Newcastle with its pristine beaches and lakes. I estimate the mines represent 3% of the land mass and growing. Considering the depth of these mines, this figure could be easily doubled, 650,000 people now being directly affected. The nature of the beast, a shovel loading truck with dust out of control, leaving the mine. This is only one drag line, a football field line continually producing dust on almost a still day. Mines keep making promises they simply can't keep. This clip equates to about five minutes of operation. The proposed extension will unearth two and a half million tonnes of overburden. The Wallamai National Park, approximately 100 metres high, acts like a dam collecting the dust. Bulga is in the distance at the foothills. Here's other obvious sources of dust on a windy day. This is a pollution created over a 12 hour period by one part of one mine, a still morning with signal off in the distance. This cloud of pollution is approximately 6 kilometres long and 1.5 kilometres wide, drifting towards Mount Thorley Industrial Area, where hundreds of men and women work daily, and then on to Singland, with a population of 25,000 people. This is another still morning view of what we commonly experience. The sources are clearly evident. The Wamba United Extension is northwest of Volga. This clip shows... The extent of pollution, which I believe was created over an estimated 24 to 48 hour period in still conditions. This mine is west, southwest of Broke and Pecolba, which is similar to the position that the Walkworth extension is to Singleton. Based on the figures I have estimated, this one machine has the capacity to easily create 144 tonnes of all airborne dust every 24 hour period on most given days except after considerable rain. These are further examples of multiple dust sources from mines on a still day near Musselbrook showing the cumulative effect on this community. At 10.30pm on the 30th of January the PM level at Musselbrook was 50. That's in the red zone, meaning people should not be outside breathing the air. Single is in a similar position and this extension will only add to this dilemma. Not before too long, it won't be safe for children to play outside in the playgrounds at their schools. These mines are clearly affecting the underground water sources that feed our bores and waterways. The state of the beautiful Wallamai Brook. Wombo regularly drew large unmetered amounts of water from her to wash coal, and I believe still do. This is the mighty Hunter River. The pressure on this ecosystem is crippling. The mine states it will make minor contributing impacts to alluvial groundwater, thousands of acres torn up, coal mined and washed, simply rubbish. 
The mine says it's an adequate water licenses. Ask <laughs> from where and at what further expense to our environment and this critically sensitive ecosystem. If coal is to stay, what is the solution? I believe underground mining only, provided it's sited away from known water sources, either above or below ground, and the alluvial land associated with these waterways protected. I believe what this plaque says. Mining nature and the environment can coexist if done responsibly. This is the Burragrang Valley, the catchment of Sydney water supply, mined for over 80 years underground. Towns nearby like Natai Bulai, Oakdale, the Oaks, Camden, all thriving and living potentially healthy and prosperous lives. Wollongong and the South Coast, Appen and Inland near Picton, Newcastle and Lower Hunter all continue underground mining with little effect to the environment compared to open cut operations. The Hunter Valley can be returned to its former beauty. Vineyards, tourism, horse breeding, conventional farming practices like hay production, dairy, beef production, or simply choosing a rural lifestyle. This is Miribadale, a stunning place and a very precious and important neighbouring community of Bulga. Many of the Bulga children attend the Miribadale Primary School. This is a clip of Jerry's Plains. This clip shows just a little of the enormous commitment the horse industry has in the Hunter Valley. I've heard this billion dollar horse stud industry is seriously considering packing up and moving interstate. If this madness for coal and profits continues. If the horse industry did leave it would devastate the future of the Hunter Valley and something we hope never happens. Please, please never allow this beautiful land of Jerry's Plains, Walkworth, Denman, Marywall, Wybong Valley or any further part of New South Wales to fall victim to open cut mining. Ring or email your state member today. Ask for a moratorium on open cut mining to be immediately instigated. Stop any more open cut mines being approved or extended. Share this video with as many people as you can. This is further stunning views near Dawes Creek and the Hunter River towards Denman. It is also a mix of horse studs and traditional farming. This land should never be ripped up. The land on the other side of the highway belongs to the mines, I believe. Isn't God a show-off? This is the magical Bylong Valley, a perfect example of farming and pristine rural ecosystem. This is what the Hunter Valley used to somewhat look like before open cut mining. Some may be aware, many are not, that incredibly the New South Wales government is considering a new open cut mine owned by a foreign mining company in this gorgeous valley. Complete madness for money. New South Wales please wake up before it's too late for our children and their children. Simply stunning. From the mountains of Wallamai National Park, you can clearly see the sorts of dust coming from the mines owned by Glencore and Yankol. Bulga is potentially about to be seriously affected by what should only be seen as an illegal extension of Mount Thorley Mine. Please stand with us in this fight. With the enormous removal of overburden required, open cut mining is very dangerous to our health and our environment and communities cannot sustain its reckless methods any longer. There is a viable alternative and the companies are more than capable of going down that path. Viable mining, while value adding to our community, both economically and ecologically, just makes good sense. Our well-being and the future of our children is more important than the New South Wales government, company profit, shareholders or money. Please act today to stop this madness and destruction of the Hunter Valley and New South Wales, where we work, live and play. Thank you.